Today, we're going to be discussing how young people can help stop the spread of COVID-19. We'll also dive deeper and take a look into why it's so important for them to do so. There is a second wave of COVID-19 that is currently going on right now. Cases are spiking up again, as you can see in this graph. They've become even higher than they were before. One of the largest reasons for the second wave is due to schools reopening. Schools are a small area with a large group of people, increasing the social network of each person. Until now, most people were staying indoors in their houses. There's almost no way to keep students socially distanced at school, and transmission of the virus is inevitable. And given that there are hundreds of people in each school, that means hundreds of families are potentially affected. So how different will the second wave be? We should be a little bit more prepared this time around. Hospitals are more suited to deal with COVID patients as long as we remain under the maximal capacity. The major focus right now will be contact tracing and trying to find out who infected people may have spread the virus to. The COVID-19 app by Health Canada has been developed to help in this regard. We know a lot more about the virus this time, however, there is a lot that we still don't know. Demographic models are key to infectious disease analysis, and current research is beginning to identify the unique age structure of confirmed cases in the Hong Kong, where infection rates have been concentrated within the younger demographic, and the larger incidence rates have been reported to be within the 14 to 24 years of age group. You need to look no further than the 1918 influenza pandemic where young adults suffered proportionally greater than other age groups due to increased environmental interaction as a result of the First World War. Now this becomes relevant in today's understanding of COVID-19 as the younger demographic continues to maintain more frequent interaction with the environment. It's important to note that even the healthiest individuals are still susceptible to contracting COVID-19. Athletes like Cristiano Ronaldo, Ibrahimovic, Cam Newton, and Kevin Durant have all contracted COVID-19, showing that the virus really doesn't discriminate health and age. Therefore, the popular narrative that you are too healthy to get COVID-19 certainly seems misplaced. It's clear that young adults may be equally as susceptible to contracting COVID-19, and as we are yet to determine the true extent of its associated health complications, it's important that we collectively act to limit the spread of COVID-19 and protect each other by protecting ourselves. As they say, it's important to fear the unknown, especially in times like this. The University of Illinois has the distinction of being one of the few schools to not shut its doors. At their Urbana campus, instead, more than 40,000 students took coronavirus tests twice per week. In one month, this was 320,000 tests. Students will not be allowed to enter campus buildings until a mandated app confirms that their results have come back negative. Masks were mandatory at all times. It was the most comprehensive plan in the country for safely running a population-dense area during the peak of the pandemic. Experts were optimistic. The measures being planned ensured that outbreaks would be controllable. But what the experts forgot to consider was whether or not students were compliant with their instructions. At its worst, the Urbana campus was recording 300 positive tests per day. This was a disaster. What the experts hoped to happen was something like this animation. Students would adhere to social distancing and maintaining a social bubble. So, outbreaks would be confirmed by testing and isolation could happen as quickly as possible. However, many of the students had their own ideas about how to live their life under quarantine. Students continue to find ways to party in large groups, despite warnings, and did not maintain a social bubble. In fact, some students went as far as partying after having tested positive, and finding ways to block the app so they can attend lectures even while being infected. The following animation can help us understand what really happened at this campus. After one positive infection, there was a lack of social isolation, so the virus was free to spread across the entire campus. Now that we've discussed how COVID affects young people, we wanted to remind you how to protect yourself as well as those around you. Social distancing is the best way to stop the spread. Try your best to stay two meters away from people who do not live in the same household as you. If social distancing is not possible, 
or you are indoors, wear a mask. It's crucial that you wear your mask properly. Make sure it covers your nose, mouth, and chin. Another way in which you can prevent the spread of COVID is by washing your hands. Make sure you use soap and wash all areas of your hands thoroughly. And finally, if you have come into contact with someone who has COVID or are experiencing symptoms, get tested as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out the Demystifying Medicine website for more content.